Hello everyone, welcome back to another game asset tutorial. This time we're going to be creating a Japanese style lantern. Now this one is based roughly on this prop that you would see in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. As I was playing through this, um, a few of my tutorials have already been based on some of the props I've seen in that. But I kind of really like this one. It's a little bit more complex than what we've done before, so we've got to take it up a level. Hopefully you're familiar with my previous... Um, previous props that we've made, you're familiar with some of the techniques we're going to use, so we're just going to make them just a little bit more complex this time, develop those skills a little bit further. So we're just going to eyeball this, it's not going to be an exact one-to-one -one replica, but we should be able to get something that's very, very like it. Now I've given this a complexity rating of 2 this time, because what I want to do is, instead of just going straight from 3D Studio Max into Substance Painter, I'm also going to Go into ZBrush and just add a few wee cracks into the base and some uh, wear and tear into this um, wooden pillar here. Um, you can probably skip that step if you want to. But um, we'll try and go through the whole tutorial and add that in as well. So we'll do, as we usually do, we'll do the modeling first of all. We will do the unwrap. We will go into ZBrush and get those higher details. And then we'll finish off in Substance Painter where we will combine the low poly mesh with the details of the high poly and we'll texture it. So let's just get stuck right into it. I'm going to leave this image here on screen and I will minimize my OBS and let's just get stuck in. So looking at this here, first thing I want to do is measure out the kind of height we've got and we've got a total height of about 8 foot. So what I'm going to do first of all, just out here somewhere, I'm going to make a little box and one foot is 30 centimeters, so I'm going to give this a height of 8 times 30 is 240. And that way I've got this just as a little visual reference. Ooh, whoops. Just as a little visual reference of how high I want my final prop to be. So I'm going to start, I'm going to work from the bottom up. I'm going to start with the base. I'm going to start with the box. And I'm going to make this about 45 in the width, or in the length, 45 in the width, and I think about maybe 65 in the height, because it's just a little bit taller than it is wide. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to convert that to an editable poly, and I'm just going to select this top face, and I'm going to scale it just ever so slightly down, just to give the tiniest wee bit of taper, and you can see there down at the bottom, and um, that was about 90%, 89-90%. So that's grand. That's all I'm going to do there. Uh, what I am going to do now, though, is go back to my Move tool. And I've got these numbers down the bottom. This is the actual position in world space that it is. I'm just going to right-click on these little arrows. If I, if I left-click them up and down, you can see we can move it. But if I right-click on it, I will just instantly set that number to zero. I could also manually type in the number zero in there. Hit Enter, and that will do it. But... It's uh, quicker if we just right-click those arrows. So that will just center that on the origin point. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a cylinder. And just drop aside here for now. I'm going to drag this up. And I am going to set this to have 8 sides. So if you're just starting out, this might have 16 or whatever. We want to set that number down to 8. And you'll see it gives us just 8 sides. Uh, I'm going to give it a cap segment of 2. It just might be easier uh, selecting certain faces and stuff. I always find if we have that cap segment on there. We don't really need it, but it will make some selections easier. Height segments, I've got that set down to 1 for now. That'll probably default about 5, but I'm going to set it down to 1, and we can manipulate that later. And then, let me see, what do I want to do? Um, select my Move tool again. Right click, right click, just to center that, and then I will move it up. And just make sure it's just touching and no more in there. And I can put the radius up on that slightly. Now you will notice that we have this little stone rim here around the object. And I am going to actually make that, uh, I'm going to generate that from the cylinder. Although it's part of the base, I'm going to generate it from the cylinder. And then we can retexture it later on. So We'll, we will add that once we've got the initial primitive setup here. Uh, how high do I want this to be? I 
we look at our image here, that pillar is maybe coming up to just above the halfway point. So that's just above halfway, maybe just a tiny few bit too high. I'll shrink it down a little bit. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, yeah, I'm having up with that. Maybe a little bit off in the proportions, but close enough as makes no difference. So I'm happy enough with that. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rename these pieces lantern underscore base. Lantern underscore pillar. And it would help if I spelled pillar right. A R, there we go. Uh, note I'm using the underscores there, not just a space, because some software doesn't like spaces. Not all software, it doesn't usually matter, but it's not a bad habit to get into um, across all your software, just for consistency. Uh, okay, so this, if we look at what we've got here, you can see that on this one, the, the flat side is kind of parallel with the flat side here, whereas we're looking at a corner. So what we need to do is just rotate this a little bit. So we select my rotate tool, and we want to rotate this in the Z axis, and because we have eight sides and we want to rotate it so this is flat, we actually only want to rotate this a quarter, or sorry, half of an eighth of 360, which is 22.5. I'm not actually that fast at maths. I just practiced this earlier on and know that's the number that I need. So there we go. Last thing I want to do with this, I'm going to right click, convert to edible poly. I'm just going to select my vertices, select all of these top ones. And again, I'm just going to bring this in just the tiniest, tiniest wee amount, just to add the subtlest little taper there. And that'll be lovely. So now what I want to do is, I'm going to add in, first of all, this little rim at the bottom to give me the, uh, the other wee bit of the stone base. So if we maximize this up, you'll be able to see this whole menu in your ribbon. But uh, because I've got a little bit smaller, it's shown here just as edit. So if I click edit, uh, it might be one of these elements that's collapsed down. But what we're looking for uh, is in the edit panel, the option here called swift loop. And we're going to toggle that on, it'll turn blue. And then you'll see there that we can add a loop just anywhere it's down near the bottom here. I'm just going to click and add that. And then we're going to deactivate swift loop. And what I will do is I'll go into my polygon mode. I'll zoom in here a little bit. I select one face and then I hold shift and select one of the adjacent faces. You'll see that entire ring is highlighted. If I click on that, it'll highlight all of them. Then I go to scroll down here on the modify panel to extrude. And that is extruding vertically up the way. That's not what we want. What we need to do is change this from uh, the mode of group in this first wee box and set that down to local normal. What local normal will do is we'll extend that out. Um, everything out, outwards, but they're still connected, like so. And we just want to set that size. Uh, just eyeball it to something that looks about right. So it should be, the, the extrusion should be out with the same amount as it is tall. So that's okay. Just hit the little tick to apply that. Everything's brilliant. There we go. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to do something somewhere up the top here. You can see if we look, now I know this is quite a dark image here, but if you look closely, um, there's actually a little bit of a rim there. And I'll do the exact same thing. We'll go to edit, swift look, and just add another little loop in there. Deactivate swift look mode. And still in polygon mode, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just selecting one, holding shift, and then hovering over an adjacent polygon, clicking that, and then I'm going to extrude that again. Extrude it just a little bit. That's probably enough there. Um, we can always come back and expand it later. If I wanted to, what I could do, save myself a few polygons and save myself a bit of a headache with the uh, UV later on. I can get rid of all these top polys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select just this center wee vertex here. Uh, in vertex mode, if I select that, and then if I control click on polygon, it's kind of hard to see because it's red on red, but you'll see that that selected all the connected um, polygons that that one center vertex connect to. Now if I grow 
and hit grow again. You can see we've got that whole top surface. Just hit delete, that'll get rid of those. We could do the same on the bottom as well. So why not? Um, in terms of polygons, it's not really saving us very much, but in terms of making the UV unwrap a little nicer later on, uh, well, that's quite useful. So again, control click, uh, select that center vertex, control click on polygon mode, click grow, in this case twice, uh, and then just hit the delete key to delete those polygons. And I'll just move that back down there. It's just touching and no more. So we've got this little um, metal kind of ring, uh, decorative ring on the pillar. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that yet, so I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to move on to the next little part of our uh, of our mesh. And what I'm going to do is. I'm going to add. Go add another. Do you know what? I might have been better keeping that top cylinder on there. I might need it after all. Um, yeah. Do you know what? I will actually. I'm going to just cap these again. I shouldn't have deleted those, but I can cap them off so that they're a little bit um, tidier. So I'm just going to select two opposite uh, edges here, and I'm just going to hit bridge. And now I'm going to select this one and this one, bridge those, and I'll select this edge and this edge, and bridge those. I forgot that we might actually just be able to see if you look if you look very very closely in here, you might see that top surface just between these little decorative elements. Um, so we need to keep that. The bottom one is fine to get rid of that. The top one, yes, we will actually just leave that in there. Um, now what I want to do, yes, we'll create these little decorative elements, and if we zoom close in on those, we can see how they're actually assembled. And we have basically a box shape that sort of steps in and steps in, and then there's another box on top with a little uh, chamfer there on that corner. So that's how we're going to create this, just two boxes. And what I'll actually do is I will create this uh, upside down, just to begin with, and then we'll flip it around. It's just easier to see it if we do it um, upside down. So just zero that, zero that, and move it again so it's just touching that top surface. Actually, it doesn't matter because we need to flip it anyway. So just move it up roughly here, and we'll look and get the sizes right. Uh, so that should extend out uh, just a little bit off the edge. That's maybe a little bit too big, so modify our length just down a little bit. That should do, and our height doesn't need to be that tall. So I'll put you in there, and that will do. I'm going to convert you to an edible poly. And all I want to do is take this top surface, I'm going to inset it, and just eyeball that. Uh, one centimeter, one centimeter actually looks okay. Then we're going to extrude that out just a little bit. Okay. Um, so these are both quite small chunks. Then we're going to inset that once more. Uh, same amount will probably be fine. And we'll extrude that once more, but this one's a little bit taller. Uh, that looks okay. And what we'll do is we'll just rotate this around. Uh, but we want to right click and go to top level. So we're rotating the whole object, not just that single polygon. Uh, I've also got my angle snap toggle activated here. And that means it'll rotate in increments of 5 degrees. Just make it that easier to rotate it. Exactly 180. You can see there it's going up and down by 5 degree increments each time as I rotate that round. So there we go, 1A. Uh, okay, let me see, just move that into position now. And we'll just, again, just so much that it's touching and no more. And what we'll do is we'll call this um, lantern 
underscore, I don't know what the term would actually be for this, but we will call it um, just, uh, just decorative elements, decorative, lantern underscore decorative underscore one. Uh, all we're going to do is we should have, as you can see, eight of these in total around the whole object. So if we make it long enough that it extends out both sides, all we need to do is rotate this round. Uh, if I hold the shift key and rotate this, it will create a clone of it. So I'm just holding the shift. Uh, let me see. Make sure you click on the correct um, axis there, horizontal axis, and rotate that by 90 degrees. And there we go. When you release that button, you get this little window. Just leave it as a copy. And that is fine. And do you know what? Before we go any further, we do have this one extra wee piece. Uh, so I'll create another box just to save me from duplicating. I'll duplicate everything at once. Um, create that other long, thin little box. Move it again. Uh, zero it. That doesn't look too bad, maybe a little bit too tall, so I'll just pull the height down a little, bring the length down a little bit as well. So on top there. Uh, what one with this one? Because we've got a little bit of a chip in here, we're going to add a height segment. And then we're going to convert this to an edible poly. Uh, I'm just going to select that bottom polygon there. And with my scale tool selected, I'm just going to scale that down in that one single axis. Just eyeball it, just enough. There we go. I'm happy enough with that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Maybe we could scale that out a little bit. We can see it extends just a little bit. So I'll just go to top level. Actually, no, I won't go to top level. What I actually want to do with this is I want to go to my vertexes and select everything. And what I was going to do there was scale the whole object up, but I would much rather do this at the vertex level. The reason being when I scale up uh, an object in top level and then export it to other softwares, sometimes it doesn't carry over. But if I scale it up at the sub object level, i.e. if I take these vertexes and manipulate those vertexes, it, it just works a lot better. So if you ever scale on a whole object up, it is better just to select all the vertexes and do it that way. Um, okay, so that's that little piece. We'll do the same process there. I'm going to hold shift and rotate that. Let me see if I can just get the right axis here. For some reason, it never likes the horizontal axis. So hard to select that horizontal axis. I'll select the others, fine. There we go. And I just select that. Oops. And we'll rotate it by 90 degrees. There we go. So now that I've got uh, two of these, if I ever select, oh, damn it. there we go. Now I've got two of these. What I want to do is just select all four of these objects and do the same again. Rotate them horizontally. As you can see, that did not work because it did not select horizontal axis. So just control Z that. Cancel, control Z. Just have to be very, very careful to get that horizontal axis. Now, I appreciate the color on these is not great. You can't really see it. But if you just select that horizontal axis, and this one, we just want to rotate by 45 degrees. There we go. And that's what we are left with. So yes, we are getting a lot of overlap here in the middle, uh, but these are going to be covered up by the rest of the lantern, so I wouldn't really worry about it. Uh, I'm going to cover those up. What we could do, if you were wanting to be really efficient, you could have actually just made one of these and unwrapped it once and then duplicated it. 
the way we've done it now, we've got the entire model, but we'll have to unwrap these separately later on. But unwrapping will be easy enough. I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, so next thing, and yeah, we're going to cover most of it anyway, so I'm not too worried. I'm just going to make another little square plate here, center it, and move it up just above those. As I say, our height, we're going to be 40 by 40. That's probably a little bit too small, actually. And on the back, if we look back at our... Hmm. It looks like these might actually, these corner ones might actually be larger than the edge ones here, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to leave this as is. Oh, that's what's wrong. One of these has disappeared. Why, where has that disappeared to? Ugh, oh, that's a pain. Easy enough fixed. Just rotate. 45 degrees. There we go. Um, we could maybe make this, yeah, just make this plate just a tiniest bit bigger. Maybe 42, 42 height segment. I just need one to fix that. And then just adjust the actual height just so it's not clipping through there. There we go. So next thing I want to do now is actually put the, the lantern on top. Let's just zoom in to get a good look at it here. And we've got these little kind of corner chunks sticking out. So if you bear with me, I'll show you how to make those now. I'm just going to duplicate this little box. So just again, hold shift and raise it up. And we'll call this as uh, lantern underscore. Uh, this is actually the, the lantern part. So lantern. A bit of a silly name, but it'll do. I'm just going to change the color of that as well, so we get a better look at it. And with this one, I'm going to make it still a bit chunkier, put the height up a little bit, and that will do. I'm going to convert this to an edible poly. So what I need to do is split this up a little bit. Uh, again, I apologize for the sort of the, the bad light, and it's kind of hard to see. You can see there's two little uh, chunks kind of extruding out the end of the corners here. Little squares coming out. So, how are we going to do that? We are going to go to our edge mode. And we're just going to select, drag and select all four of these edges. And we're going to use the connect option here. Click on that. What this does will put uh, an edge loop through this right down the middle. Now we could have used swift loop like we did before, but the trouble with swift loop is we're eyeballing it and we'll not get the same thing if we swift loop here and then over here, it's impossible to match them up. So using the connect mode, we can have multiple uh, loops at it and just by adjusting this middle pinch control, we can slide them out towards the end, but both of these will be exactly equal. So we want two segments with a 78, and we hit OK. And then what we'll do is we'll just uh, slide around the other way and we'll select these and we'll do the same thing. We hit connect and the beauty of this is cl clicking that wee settings button, it saves the same settings as before, so 2 and 78. So because this is a square object, everything is now equal and we are happy little bunnies. There we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my Polygon sub-object mode, click on all of these little guys around the corners, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to extrude, again hit my settings button, and you'll see they come out this way. That's not quite what we want. Normally we would go local normal, but again that's not quite what we want either. So what we're going to do is set this to polygon mode, and that is perfect. That's the result we want. Just pull that down a little bit. So you can see those three different extrusion modes. They all have slightly different uses. 
and select the different results. And we just have to pick the one, uh, get used to how they work, and pick the one that will give us the appropriate result. In this case, we're setting it to polygon mode. And OK. And now just to extrude up the rest of the lantern. So we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to extrude this up from the middle. But before we extrude, we want to uh, change that setting from polygon mode. We actually want to set this back to local normal. The trouble being, if we extrude this as polygon mode, all of these would come up separately and it's going to be a bit dirty and cluttery. If we set up as local normal, that means this will come up just as one solid face together and that's what we want. So make sure after you've done these little nodules extruded by polygon, extrude this top part by local normal. And we're going to pull that way up. Let me see roughly how tall they want that lantern to be. That looks okay. Should just be slightly taller than it is wide according to our image. And yeah, I'm happy enough with that. So what I will do now is, again, we've got a very slight taper on that lantern. So I'm going to just make that the tiniest wee bit bigger. Just ever so slightly. Barely perceptible at all. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude once more. I'm going to keep that just about that three and a half, four centimeter mark. And then I'm going to extrude once more. And this extra extrusion is actually going to be the little pitch of our roof here. So I'm going to extrude that out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these three polygons. I'm going to scale those way in. And then move that up. Mm, do you know what? I don't like how this is giving me these big stretch polys here. I might actually undo that. And is there a better way for this? There should be. What if I just move that up without? Mm, no. I'm trying to think which one do I prefer? Maybe if I do bring that in. It ultimately doesn't really matter when we go to unwrap it and flatten it, it won't really matter, but what's just nicer and tidier. Do you know what? It's okay, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll leave it like that for now, we'll come back to it. Uh, the next wee thing I'm going to fix is I'm going to select this face, this one, this one. Again, just control clicking every time. Uh, I'm actually going to extrude these back the way into the surface. Now don't go too far or else they'll start to uh, encroach on each other. We'll just go a slight amount. It just gives that thickness of the lantern. And there we go. Uh, I'm just going to top level this and just bring the whole object just down slightly. Just so it's touching that and no more. And we're nearly there. All we have to do really now is add this uh, sort of slightly curved pitch roof. So what's my best way of doing that? Let me see. Okay. Let's just fire away. This might not be the best method, but it's the one that's sticking out to me uh, as of now. Uh, let me take this. And actually, let me. Do you want to do that? No, I don't. Okay, here's what we'll do. Um, yeah, I'm going to take these, these top ones again, and I am actually just going to bring these in so that they're near enough a point, not quite touching, but near enough a point. I'll maybe come back and fix this topology later, uh, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not actually that important. I could leave it like that if I want. 
What I want to do is select these three in the middle and the pitch. So we've got that whole top pitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold shift and move that up ever so slightly. I'm going to create clone to object and we'll call this lantern underscore pitch. There we go. Uh, so right click and go to top level again just so we're in our main object mode and I'm going to select that little pitch and I'm going to change the color of it just so that we can uh, discern it a bit easier. And we're going to take that as the basis for our little pitch. Now you can see on this image that the pitch has a slight curve on it. Uh, you see there's just a bit of a curve there. So I'm going to try and recreate that. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to play this topology a little bit. I'm going to go to my edge mode. Now I don't actually need this here. So I'm going to double click to select that whole row. Yeah. Control and backspace, get rid of that. And same again over here, double click just to select the whole line, uh, and then control backspace to get rid of it. What I will do is I will add that little bit of uh, curve now. So I want to subdivide this maybe about three times. So I will select these two and I'll hit. Uh, connect and we just lower that pitch just a little bit so these are closer to the middle again just eyeballing it but then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side select those two opposite edges uh, control click them then go to connect little settings box and it'll give me those same settings again so I am just going to add a little bit of curve to this and I'm going to do that I will just go to my vertex mode, select these top four, and just move them up a little bit. And then I will select these two, and these two, and just scale them out a little bit. And that will help create that very subtle kind of curve. It is very subtle, there's not much to it. Um, maybe they need a little bit more curve. Yeah, I'll just bring these two up a little bit more then. Just to give me that little bit more curve. There we go. That's perfect. Uh, and it should be a little bit bigger than my lantern as well. So I'm just going to select everything on that object and scale it out the way. There we go. Perfect. And let me see, is there anything else I want to do at this point? No, I'm happy with that. So what I'll do is I will come to the, the top level of this object. I'm going to add a modifier to it now. And I'm going to call this uh, shell. It should be in here in my list. There we go. Shell. And I'm going to set the outer shell to about that much. That looks okay. Now there is still a little bit of a gap here, that's okay, we're going to fill that in later on. Uh, but we can see if we look at this image, there's kind of two layers of that uh, pitch there. I can't really get a good view as to what's happening on the underside, so I'm just going to imagine that we have another just solid layer there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, right click and hide, select, hide unselected, just to hide everything else under here. And what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to right click here again and convert to edible poly. And what that'll do is it'll collapse that shell down there. Uh, so make sure you're happy with your thickness and all. But it will let me go to my polygon mode. I'm just going to select all these bottom side polys here. I'm just going to insert this just the tiniest little amount. Maybe one centimeter too small, maybe about 1.7. Yep, that's perfect. And we're going to extrude this guy just again by local normal. 
Normal. No, do you know what? This time we're going to go by group. Go by local normal. You can see that we're getting a wee bit of a crisscross there. Uh, it's not too bad when we're really low. But when we get up high, this little point here is where we start. Uh, cross, and we see this here, and it looks a bit wrong. It's not really nice. Uh, so instead what we'll do is we will change this from local normal to group and that way everything just comes vertically down the way and it's that a little bit cleaner and we can extend that out as thick as we need and that's grand. Hit OK and we'll unhide all and we can see that we're still, uh, we've got a gap in there, we've got a gap here, but that's OK, all we're going to do um, I might just take these two edges, these two edges here are looking about sharp, so this bottom edge and this bottom edge and if I just scale those in a little bit, why is it not letting me do this, uh, oh I know, uh, three days max a bit weird, it doesn't like you really scaling in Edges, but we'll change that to vertex mode and actually just select these four vertexes instead. A little bit weird, a little bit finicky that way. But if you're wondering, if you ever wonder why the, the gizmo isn't where it should be, just swap from edge mode to vertex mode, it might fix it. I'll just pull that in ever so slightly and just move them up ever so slightly now as well, just so they're not overly thick or whatever. Just a little bit more. And again, I'm just eyeballing this just to get it right. That'll do. That'll do. Okay, whole thing, I think, is just a wee bit small because we were starting on the same size as the lantern. I want this to kind of overhang a little bit. So we just want to make everything just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go top level. And I'm just going to scale. Now you'll notice the gizmo's down here because we haven't centered it in this object, that's fine. Just widen this out just a tiniest little amount. There we go. And in fact, I've just realized I'm doing that thing I said I should never do. Uh, so, nope, we're not going to scale with that. Go to the vertex mode, select all these vertexes, and then scale them out just a little bit. And that there, yeah, that's enough. That's all we need. And all I'm going to do at this point is just lower that down until it touches. Not going to be too, too pernicious. Actually, do you know what? It's annoying that that gizmo's down there. You want to fix that. Just go over to this third B tab. Uh, effect pivot only. Make sure that's active. And just go center the object. And you see the pivot has moved up here. So we'll deactivate effect pivot only now by your modify panel. That way it just brings the pivot up where it was. The reason it was down below is because that's where it started on this object and we separated that top from there. Uh, okay, so we'll just move you down until you're touching and no more. Yeah, happy days. I'm happy with that. That looks good. Uh, we have a couple of little extra elements on top here, which I'm actually just going to manually um, create. We have a little bit of a pitch on top. So we'll select you and extrude you out just a little bit. Uh, yeah, that'll be grand. I'm not going to overthink it. And then I'm going to actually create another little box. Let me just put it down here. This is a very small little thing. Uh, we will center you on those two axes, bring you up, and with this one we want two length segments, we just want that X to segment in there, whatever the long side is, uh, not worry too much about the, the height and all, but we'll just put maybe that width down just to tiny little bit, and Okay, I'm going to convert you to an um, edible poly. Go to your vertexes, and I just want to bring up these two in the middle. Just give that a little pitch. 
And that's it. I'll just move the whole object just down until it's uh, intersecting the whole thing. Again, if we want to see ourselves a couple of polys, I can actually take these two off the bottom. It might just make her unwrap just a tiny wee bit quicker. Uh, and I'll even just I'll get that to the height I want and just bring the bottom vertexes down. Not the whole object, just those vertices. There we go, perfect. And what we'll do is, I will just select you, as we've done before, hold shift and move, and that will create a little copy of you. There we go. So that's our whole thing. I can delete this box now. This was just our height reference. We can delete that into red. Uh, this is our base model. This is going to be our low poly version. This is the one that's going to be in game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to play with this a little bit more. Um, and then we'll go into ZBrush. Uh, but we'll end this here. As I say, this is our what will be our game ready one. So I think that's as good a point to stop this video. What's our time at? We are 40 minutes already. And we're going to get the model done. Yep, we're going to stop this one here. I will see you in part two where we are going to just tweak this and then ZBrush it. So thank you for watching. I will see you in part two.